book or someone may be solving someone will be reading these notes or these guide books and you're like oh i'm just doing the notes uh-huh. so is it okay so i think the main fact is to trust your instincts trust your notes hmm. and trust that you've studied well so the outcome will be good Hi guys, welcome back to Neat PG Insights. Today we have with us uh, Dr. Urvil Shah, who is AIR 26, and uh, he's also a very good friend of mine. So good to have you on our channel, Urvil. Hello, hi Chinmay, what's up? Nothing. <laughs> so <laughs> you you might be knowing that uh, the Neat PG 2022 registration process just started, yeah. and uh, hmm. that only two months are left for the examination. So uh what do you like i'll just cut straight to it what do you think that the neat pg aspirant should be doing at this stage so uh the last few months before the exam is predominantly just about revision right like whatever you've uh, read in the past few months has to be revised again and again kind of drilled in your head so that you use that knowledge for your exam right right and uh, so predominantly i would say for revision the important key is to sticking to your notes Okay. I mean, this is one of the most important thing. It's easy. Like medicine is very vast, so mm-hmm. your mind can go here and there. Right. If you stick to your notes, you're consistently doing what, uh, you know, you're consistently doing the most common things, and as a result of which, you have the knowledge. There's no need to go think about the, um, you know, out of the box things, you know, just the common topics. That's predominantly the main thing which you should study. Right. Also, an important way to revise is, I think, the twentieth book. which okay. is a uh, very important yeah we recently so, made a video about that yeah about all the volatile top keep putting hmm, all the volatile exactly. topics in one book hmm. right yeah so, so that's what i used to do like whatever uh, the topics i had like in each subject which i was weak in or the in every subject which were topics i was weak in i used to just you know kind of list them down yeah. or list a few points about that whatever mistakes i made in gts i would make it together you know it's a good revision last minute the things you don't know you get to know those things other than that when you're revising a particular subject also like okay. you know that you after giving gts and you know you realize what is the most important thing hmm. and you so once you start revising so it's important that you do those things first basically you prioritize the subject right, as well right like you those you do those topics first instead of the other topics okay because that's how you can you know like um, give most of uh, your attention to those topics right and yeah and yeah and uh you have to make your revision skills you have, uh, as in like you have to continuously do the volatile topics because they're easy to remember like a, lo- a significant chunk of the information is just basically remembering stuff right yeah so what you should do yeah. is probably every day you know like devote like 45 minutes to uh, things which you'll forget a lot like probably if i'm doing an act a day so i'll probably in those 45 minutes in the day i will devote to like ipcs of forensic because you easily okay. forget them Hmm. So something like that, it gives you a change. Also, you remember the volatile topics. Also, so and, the volatile yeah. topics of maybe like the twentieth notebook, you will do like devote some time to those every day. Exactly. Doing yeah. it yeah. together. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. So it's not a burden. Also, you know, you you complete the book faster. Then you don't have this thing that you have to you know complete the book in this one day. Right. right. And that kind of relieves the tension. Also, so that's a very right. smart way of you know getting it done. Yeah. And. otherwise i feel last minute is pretty much so after studying you know which subjects you are strong in which subjects you are weak in and you can't study the entire subject again every subject entirely again right right so i feel uh, like uh, like for me i knew that general surgery was very vast general surgery medicine hmm. so i would of course give them time i would of course study them hmm. but i knew the cost benefit ratio so i was not overly you know giving attention completely like, invested in them like yeah, every surgery because, every step or something like that you exactly, did not yeah, into the details because, right hmm. there is a high chance like you will come across a surgery which you've never heard of never seen and you'll have a question on that right so i realized that the cost benefit ratio that way and i used to give more so kind of you know what your strengths are your weaknesses are you of course have to work on your weaknesses Right. But your strengths are your strengths, right? So in the end, you do rely on your strengths more than to, so that the shorter subjects I was really good at because I studied them well. And I, you know, if you score well in the shorter subjects, they're easier to score, they're easier, easier to solve, and relatively smaller questions, so it's easy marks. Yeah. 
it, it varies from mm-hmm. person to person i guess exactly it person right. yeah exactly yeah so to identify those strengths and weaknesses and then to capitalize on your strengths is essential i feel last moment okay mm-hmm. and uh, so a, a lot of people are doing you know various kinds of things especially in the last phase of preparation so how, how to deal with that like uh, because so many people around you are doing so many different kinds of things hmm. uh i mean yeah it's really difficult to not fall in the trap of the fomo trap right fear of yeah. missing out like someone will be solving mcqs from this particular book or someone may be solving someone will be reading these notes or these guide books and you're like oh i'm just doing the notes uh-huh. so is it okay so i think the main fact is to trust your instincts trust your notes hmm. and trust that you've studied well so the outcome will be good like if you okay. go with that psychology it's easy not to fall in the trap of fomo and this will like this is like this just keeps you mentally sane right because you are not right. going here and there you're not thinking about what the other person is doing hmm. because i mean it is so vast there are there is no one single way of cracking this exam there are various ways you just have to do the one which suits you the most great hmm. and i just want to know that how can one uh, get better at uh, solving mcqs uh yeah so m uh, so solving an mcq is not as easy as writing a theory question you have to practice like practice is very essential right. to you know get the hang of the mcq like hmm. nowadays the mcqs are typically those long stem questions right like a really big question you know there's a lot of information which is of absolutely no need to solve right. the mcq right so the way of doing it is typically you read the first line then you read the last line hmm. reading the last line is very important because often we make a mistake in that except or all or none right, right. yeah and then the first option is usually the one which you think will be the correct answer but actually it's b or c because mm. they're just trying to fool you because mm. it's written except right i think reading the last line carefully and you know taking probably just taking a step back when you're reading the last yeah. line uh-huh. like reading it slowly so as to ensure you don't make those silly mistakes is very important right and other than that i feel um it comes with practice of course so you have to identify the keywords in the mcq because that will ensure which topic it is like for example a simple thing like if there is a question in psychiatry mm. and if it has anything related to impending doom right you know it is related to panic attack or panic disorder and you know the acute management the chronic management what you have to give okay. so like that if you just so identify that, that word keywords, should directly you know take you to that yeah exactly it's like a brain map so you know right. you just map your way into the answer right so reading right. keywords is important so like and, how how yeah, do how do the keywords like come to you directly like w- what is most important in getting out these keywords from questions um key- getting these keywords is so basically uh, when you read the first question the second you read the last line right. i mean of the question mm-hmm. so then you know what they're trying to ask you if it's a diagnosis if it's an investigation or if it's just a treatment mm-hmm. so reg- later with related to that you identify which particular subject it is Right. And then like this is this is a very quick process it's not like it's a step step yeah, it's yeah. a very quick process it occurs and then and then it just like if you've read well if you revise significantly well you know the keywords in your revision you have to just see keywords like it should be just like that it's panic attack impending right, doom right. acute attack is benzodiazepines this 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 huh. and then you know what to give and so that's how you revise with these keywords and then you identify the keywords and then you can solve it also uh, quickens the process of solving them right hmm so and yeah you should read all the options as well yeah uh, like not to uh, not read all the options so identifying these keywords comes mainly with practice so is it like exactly is there uh, something that you did for uh, you know maximizing uh, your mcq solving so and in, in the end i used to give predominantly like i used to solve many mcqs like i used to solve at least 75 to 100 questions a day okay so i used to like solving 25 questions once i wake up i used to solve 25 questions during breakfast uh, during breakfast lunch or dinner i used to solve another 25 questions and while just before sleeping i used to solve the 25 questions okay so that's how i could like do significantly many questions and you would so doing many questions together would often uh, feel exhausting later on right. later on you would waste some time but by doing just dividing a few few questions right. you would waste time less yeah 25 does that not seem like a big number so exactly yeah. yeah so it was it was fun also like you know just the challenge in the morning or the challenge is before sleeping right right But in a way it was yeah. good also right. and yeah solving gts i used to solve one gt every week on a sunday 
Hmm. Like it was, I had just given time, like five o'clock onwards, I used to solve one GT on episode. Yeah. So that's how you could also get practice. Yeah. That's amazing. And uh, especially like towards the end when, you know, you're under so much stress, how do you keep going? Like, how do you make yourself uh, study every day? Oh yeah. So this is a, I mean, it's up to you, right? How much, uh, how, what is your escape? Like you can't just study the entire day. So you, mm. I used to like typically play a little bit of squash, just simply play cards with my family or, you know, just go out, talk to, talk to family, talk to my mom, dad, my brother, right. a few friends once in a while, you know, once in two, three days and you just feel free. You just feel freshened up. So that's one way. And other than that, um, I think uh, sleep is a big, imp- like I never compromised on sleep because in my MBBS I had compromised on sleep and I always figured that, yeah. um, the output was never that great. Right. So I think an important key, which people usually miss, which people think is not a significant factor is you're not getting a good sleep. Yeah. Should sleep for a good eight hours. Yeah. So especially yeah. like if you're preparing over a long time, I think hmm. like sleep would be very important. Like for, yeah, for college exactly. duties and all, you know, you can pull an all nighter and just go give the paper the next day and like come hmm. back and rest maybe. But I think in this scenario, sleep would be very important. Yeah, exactly. It, it goes a long way. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, another way of like, um, so I used to make very short term goals, like a week by week goal, right. because uh, I always found out if you make week by week goals, it will be more manageable, more doable. And then when you complete your goal, the short term goal, you just feel good. You feel just gratified. Right. So it's kind of just like a boost. So, you know, you just feel good after doing, after completing, it just pushes you more. Yeah, definitely. Mm. And one, uh, like another likely possibility is that, you know, this exam also might get postponed considering that, uh, you know, mm. we need PG 2021 admissions are occurring mm. just now. So, um, the, the next exam might be postponed. So, uh, how can one deal with that? Like, because I remember at it, when we gave the exam, our ex- exam was postponed twice. NEET was postponed right, twice. INICT was postponed once. So, postponed once. yeah. So how can like, uh, someone who's studying for an exam deal with something like this? Uh, so I think in this present era with COVID, I mean, uncert- there is a lot of uncertainty, uncertainty looming around. So there's right. no point I feel thinking about it, like, or, right. you know, just giving unnecessary thought to it. Okay, what's going to happen? What's going to be the outcome? When will the exam be? What to do, etc. If, if your exam is postponed, hmm. I think you should just take a few days off. Like you just take two, three days off. If you want to just go roam around, go with your friends outside, go to a restaurant, eat, watch a movie or something like that. But, uh, then you should, of course, you know, be, you know, you should just take a break. But the important thing during this time is not to lose the momentum. I feel. Okay. Like it's easy to take the, a break, but if you take a big break and then getting back into the, you know, getting back into your mojo okay. and solving again, <laughs> you know, it's a difficult process. You know, there's a lot of inertia, which comes with taking a break. So you should okay. be in that kind of, you know, you should find your level, like a two, three day off probably right. just, you know, right. get back to normal. Right. Like what, uh, so another thing we dealt a lot of with a lot of uncertainty, right? Uh-huh. So, um, um, because, uh, social media was kind of a distraction for me. It's not for everyone, of course, mm-hmm. but for me, it was a big distraction. So I had kind of not, it was not on what's on uh, Facebook and Insta, oh. but then these times I used to download them back and, you know, just probably just chill more and see these apps. And then, then later again, I would discontinue using them. Okay. So uh, mm-hmm. somehow kind of get back to the, get, get your mojo back, you know, we yeah. have the momentum. And like, mm-hmm. once you start studying again, do you think you should, uh, because the exam is postponed now, do you think you should read some new things for a bit maybe, and then get back to revising or should you just continue revising? Yeah, I definitely think you should do something else because, uh, like we, because our exam was delayed by so many months, mm-hmm. we had chance to read, we had to read the same thing so many times Right. because we are done with our portion many times and then we're like what to do. So then right. it's of course a better decision to read something else probably, you know, go through your mistakes of your GT. Hmm. Like that is another way of basically mistakes of GT is a high chance stuff you don't know or you hmm. don't remember. Right. So in a way you're revising your GT is also learning something new. Also. So that's also another way of, you know, finding out things which you don't know and hence doing something which you've not read probably. Right. So that was a good way of, like, that's what helped me out in, okay. this uncertain, in those uncertain times. Okay. Hmm. 
uh, it was great talking to you arvil uh, before we end this interview i just want to know uh, what you want plan on doing in the future uh as of now so i think the counseling has started so now i'm pursuing orthopedics in okay. uh, km i'll pursue orthopedics in km so that's your first choice uh, yeah that's my first choice yeah okay and let's see the later hopefully you now have an orthopedic channel on youtube <laughs> <laughs> definitely and uh, mm-hmm. it was amazing talking to you i'm sure it was um, uh, thank you thank you so much and helpful advice we hope to have you on this channel again if you know yeah definitely yeah. as an orthopedic surgeon from <laughs> <Let's see. laughs> yeah all right thank you so much arvil great talking to you yeah. bye bye thank you